Hello. Today I'll be talking about the quadratic formula. Uh, the first thing you should know is you have to memorize the quadratic formula. It's really important because the quadratic formula works to solve any quadratic equation. It's really good. Um, at least in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. It has to be in that form. And it's mainly for solving equations. So it's got to be equal to zero whenever you're doing it. You need everything on one side equal to zero. Notice how it's like that for all of these. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out how many solutions there are for each equation. So we're going to use the determinant from the definitions earlier to figure out how many solutions each equation gives us. So when you're finding how many solutions there are, you're using the determinant Determinant is just b squared minus 4ac, all right? Well, the number in front of this is a, the number in front of this is b, and the number in front of this is c. So b squared would be negative 8 squared minus 4 times a times c, so 4 times negative 3 times 4. And after order of operations, let's see, we have two negatives here. So that's negative 8 squared, negative 8 times negative 8 is 64. Two negatives make it positive. So we already know this is going to be positive, but we'll finish it anyway. 16 times 3 is 48. And 64 plus 48 is 12. And 120. So this is obviously greater than zero. So this is going to give us two real solutions. So here we have two real solutions. All right, next one. Using the same thing, b squared minus 4ac. So we'll just plug it in first. b squared minus 4ac. Well, b is just negative 4. So we have negative 4 squared minus 4 times a times c. So 4 times 2 times 2. And remember, you're just using the numbers when you're plugging this in. So we have 16 minus 16, which is 0. And whenever the determinant is 0, we have one solution, one real solution. And the reason behind these is, if this whole thing turns into zero, we just have negative b over 2a as our answer. So that's, of course, one solution, because we don't have a plus or minus. It's plus or minus zero, not going to change anything. So that's for number two, one real solution. We'll go ahead and do number three. So we just plug it in. b squared minus 4ac is negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1. When there's no number in front of this, it's 1 times negative 4. And once we do this, we get 9. Two negatives make a plus 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. So that, once again, is two real solutions. So for this one, we get two real solutions. And the last one, just for the determinants, um, same thing. b squared minus 4ac equals 1 squared minus 4 times negative 3 times negative 3. That would be 1. We have 3 negatives, make a negative, minus. 4 times 3 times 3, that's 9 times 4 is 36. So here, we have negative 35, which gives us no solution. And the reason we say no solution is because that gives us an imaginary number, or an imaginary number because it's a negative under a square root. Can't have a negative under a square root, so no solutions from this equation. All right, 
Next, we're going to be actually using the quadratic formula to solve these equations. So we're going to be using the whole thing now. If it just asks you for how many solutions there are, you use the determinant. Because just knowing what's going to be under the square root tells you how many answers they are. Um, if it wants you to actually solve it, meaning we're finding what values make this equation true, we have to use the whole quadratic formula. So first, state A, B, and C. We have A is the number in front of x squared, B is the number in front of x, and C is the last number. And remember, it has to be in order. So remember that must be in order. AX squared, X squared first, then the X term, then the last number. So think highest exponent to lowest exponent. All right, so now we just plug them into this equation. So X equals Yeah, I am. Stop it. So x equals negative b, so negative 5, plus or minus the square root of 5 squared, because it's b squared, minus 4ac, so minus 4 times a is 2. Always use parentheses when you're plugging numbers in 2. And c is 2, all over... 2a, so 2 times 2. And then you just simplify this until you can't anymore. So we have x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4 times 2 times 2 is 16, so 25 minus 16 over 4. So we have the square root of 25 minus 16. We know that is the square root of 9, which is just 3. So this is going to give us two answers, and we separate them by a comma. We have negative 5 plus or minus 3 over 4, which equals two things, because one's a plus, one's a minus. So we have negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2 over 4, and... Uh, negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8 over 4. And then you simplify those to what you can. So x equals negative 2 over 4 reduces to negative 1 half. Negative 8 over 4 reduces to negative 2. Now, for number 2, same thing. But we need everything on one side. So we have to get these over here or this over here. Um, it's easier to just move the single term. So let's go ahead and add x squared to both sides and make sure you put them in order. So we're going to get 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 21. 21 might be a little bit harder to deal with, but it's all right since we're just using order of operations. It's not too hard to solve. So we get x equals negative b, well, this is our a, is 1, b is 4, and c is negative 21. So, x equals negative b is negative 4, plus or minus the square root of, we have b squared, which is 4 squared, minus 4ac, 4 times 1 times negative 21. All over. We're going to need a little bit more room, so I'll save that one for later. Uh, 2 times a is 2 times 1. So, x equals negative 4 
plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4 squared, turns into 16. Make sure you're using order of operations. Two negatives, negative 4 times negative 21, times 1, 1's not going to change anything. Negative 4 times negative 21 is plus 82. Oh, I'm sorry, 84. All over 2. 16 plus 84, that leaves us with the square root of 100, which is 10. So we have x equals negative 4 plus or minus 10 over 2. Two answers again because it's above 0. Negative 4 plus 10 divided by 2. So that's 6 divided by 2. And negative 4 minus 10, which is negative 14 over 2. So x equals our two final answers. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. Alright, and the last one I'm going to do. So first thing, we have negative 3x squared minus 3 plus x equals 0. So the first thing you want to do is get it in standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. So we need to reorder these. Highest exponent to lowest exponent. So we have 3x squared, negative 3x squared, plus x minus 3 equals 0. Then we can go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Now, if you can factor it, you can factor it to solve it. But sometimes the quadratic formula is easier. You just have to know when to use it and when not to use it. So x equals negative b, which is a is negative 3, b is 1, and c is negative 3. Never use the letters. That's important because it's not going to give you a right answer. And it's going to make it way more confusing. So never use the letters. So we have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared is 1 minus 4ac, so times negative 3 times negative 3, all over 2a, so 2 times negative 3. So, just using order of operations from here, we have x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1. Ne 3 negatives make a negative. 4 times 3 times 3 is 36 over negative 6. So x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 35 over negative 6. Now here's the problem. We're not allowed to have the square root of a negative. So, in college algebra, you would use an imaginary number here. You take it out and you have i square root of 35. But we don't do that in math for college readiness, so we're just going to say there are no solutions. Or no solution at all. And that'll be it for today.